Welcome to Simply the Truth with me, Doug Harris. Uh, glad you've joined us today because, as I usually say, you are as important as those of us here in the studio. And if you caught the wide shot, you may really wonder <laughs> who have I got in the studio today. It can only be JT. You're the only one of my guests, JT, that will turn up for an interview. How did you walk through the high street in such garb? Wouldn't you like to know? Tell my secrets. It's, I, it, it, I, it has to be. It has to uh, be. And at the start of the show, I've got to say, Lisa Achindakwe. Have you really? Yeah, you praise really, the Lord. You really, oh, is mm-hmm. that what it is? Mm-hmm. You, you're learning the language then? Well, a little bit. I think I need to show them respect because most of them are learning English. So me, me saying a few words to my friends in Zambia, like um, Lisa Amapale, God bless you. Right. Uh, you know. Great. you got to do it. And... And, and, and you got a hat, Mazungu? Mazungu. Mazungu. No. Yeah, well, tell that, tell me about I, that. Well, that's identifying who I am, you see. I've been to Africa 13 times. Right. And uh, um, a, the term for a white man, a European or whatever, in Africa, a, a vaguely sort of insulting term is Mazungu. So I take great delight in referring to myself as the Mazungu. And so it gets a bit of a laugh. So I thought I'd buy a cap, which actually says Muzungu on it, which I'll take off in a minute, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 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 that identifies so me as, your new hairdo. as a Muzungu. Well, <laughs> same hairdo as last <laughs> time, Doug, you know. <laughs> and and d- d- does the, 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 the shirt mean anything, or is it just bright colours? And they, it's just bright colours. Like, yeah. You got a problem with bright colours? I've got no problem with bright. I normally wear black on the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm colour blind, so I have no the, um, idea. I mean, how can I problem with bright colours with the waistcoat? I, I bought this in Lusaka in Zambia. Right. Yeah, uh, which is the place I go regularly. You know, to Zambia, uh, just because I thought it was really lovely. It's very cool to wear. Uh, and when I was in Zambia earlier this year, I wore this quite a lot. Mm. And, yeah, as you said there, you, you were in Zambia earlier this year, and you invited me, didn't you? I did invite you, Doug. And, and what did I say? Uh, well, this time you said no. This time I said no. But listen, I will get you to come. Is that definite? I will. Is, that, yeah. is that a promise? Going to keep working on it. Okay. And, and of course, it, it is very close to my heart because of the, the Ministry of Reach Out Trust and, and Jehovah's Witnesses and that, and that mm-hmm. will all come part, part in there. So... Uh, um, I, I was glad, I mean, we, we are able to, to at least put some of the books in the hand of the pastors. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. Yeah. You know, the viewers probably don't understand that you kindly uh, reduced, ridiculously reduced the price of your I, book. I can't sell them, so I might as well <laughs> give them away. <laughs> uh, and I, I made sure that each of the books was get, yeah. put into the hands of a church leader. Right. That would be able to educate another 100, 200 mm, people. I know. So, um, yeah, it was really kind of you and I know the books will do great work out there well we pray they do we pray they do so yeah maybe I will get there next time and get one of them shirts maybe you you never know but listen um you you were obviously not getting you all dressed up like this just to go on and talk about something else we do want to talk about Africa Mm -hmm. um, and 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 Zambia obviously in, in particular and we, we really want to unpack this because we, we often deal with apologetics we, yeah. and we often relate those apologetics to, to us here. In, in a way tonight, what we want to do is relate those apologetics into Africa. Mm-hmm. And of course, there are many Africans living in this country. Yeah, that, so. that, 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 but let's start. Why did you get involved with Africa? What, what led you out there mm. in the first place? Well, I was... It was 1991 was the first time I went, so it's been 20 years now since I've been going there, and I've been there 13 times. Uh, The reason why I went is that I was asked to go. Uh, We were part of a network of churches uh, linked up uh, called Bridge Ministries in Bristol at the time, and they had a bit of a connection in Zambia already, and and I was asked, would you like to go to Zambia? Now, I... I I said yes immediately because I knew that Zambia was the country of the world which had the highest percentage of Jehovah's Witnesses. Really? Yeah. And, uh, of course, the viewers who know me know that, just like you, my involvement has been with people of of other religions Mm -hmm. and uh, cults and groups like that. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go there. You know, I can really make a difference sort of thing. So, yes, I went out in 1991 to work with the fire-baptized churches, mainly on the copper belt of Zambia, 
Um, but of course my involvement in Zambia has increased since then. I've taught in a few Bible colleges and things. Uh, and of course over the years, you know, the, the, the breadth of things that have happened since that first connection, there's, um, there's been two minibuses sent out there. We've, we've bought or built a few houses for people. We've supported quite a number. And I say we, I mean that the people yeah. connected yeah. with me and people have come out and whatever. Uh, there's, uh, there's been um, a, gr a number of churches have helped build uh, Matende, which is uh, a children's village, because of course there are an awful lot of HIV-related orphans mm -hmm. there. And recently, m my home church back in Swansea, Linden Church, helped build um, uh, a small school, yeah. uh, which, which is doing great work mm -hmm. out there. I mean, can you remember, I, I mean, because you, I mean, culture is so different. And can, can you remember how you felt that, that first time? That <laughs> I you, guess that I you can. I, I felt very white. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yes, this Mazungu boy felt very white. Um, I, very quickly, I, mem I remember about five minutes into my first journey, my first moments in Zambia, uh, there was um, a young lad, young lad then, he's a businessman now called Gabriel Moenge. And I said, Gabriel, are we going to see lions? Are we going to see elephants, giraffes? And he said, oh, yes, we will, in Kitwe Zoo. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, had this, I had this idea, you know, that I'd be travelling up the road and seeing all this wildlife. <laughs> um, but my, my impressions, uh, the gulf was huge. And Zam I, I will say Zambia has changed enormously mm. in 20 years. Mm. Um, but I, I remember just the gulf, the difference mm. between, uh, in, in terms of um, money, availability, uh, possessions, quality of, of uh, food, housing, etc., etc. And that still is the case in many mm. ways. Mm. Um, although... These days, I remember being shocked in one of my later visits, seeing a, a teenage Z a Zambian with a mobile phone. It stopped me in my tracks. I just looked at her like this. I, and obviously Zambia was changing. Now, almost, I'd say almost, an awful lot of Zambians have got mobile phones, but uh, they use them as a replacement to their landlines, of course. <laughs> um, but the roads are terrible. Mm. You know, the main roads are okay, but the town roads, yeah. when I went last time, the, the town roads in Chingola, the town where I was staying, were the worst, mm. the worst I'd ever known them, mm. which shows that there's a problem in the, in the, the way that the, financially the society runs. You know? when, when it comes to communicating the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, did, did, did you find a difference in the way you needed to communicate with them than you would you know, on the street in Swansea or whatever? Um, um, I'll say strangely no, although there is one difference, there's one difference. In, in Zambian culture, it already accepts the reality of spiritual things. Right. So, so that is true of much of Africa, isn't it? Yes, it yes, is. Yeah, 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 it is. So you don't have to go through ten hours of counselling to discover someone's got a spiritual problem. All right, it'll come out straight away. Mm -hmm. So we did an <laughs> we did an open air. It's actually video, Doug. Right, you have to show it one day. <laughs> we, we we did an open air in uh, Chingola bus station. Mm -hmm. And while we were, doing, we were waving some flags and the Mazungus were dancing in the meeting, you know, <laughs> singing away, um, and. We, we, we were in the middle of this open air, we cast out some demons out of a teenage girl. And you think, what? What, you can't do that? You couldn't do that in Swansea yeah. on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon? No, in the bus station. <laughs> in the bus anyway. station. <laughs> um, but it was so on the surface. Yeah. And the, so it's more direct. You can be much more direct. Um, and also, what you, what you mustn't do, the same here, and those who, the viewers who've listened to the material we've done together on mm -hmm. the gospel in the past, mm -hmm. uh, the, my emphasis of the importance of repentance and the lordship of Jesus is equally, if not more important over there. Mm -hmm. Because they've, in some ways, they've picked up all the bad lessons that we have. So the difference is, like, 70% of the people in Zambia go to church. Mm. Right? And it's not just nominal church. These are people who say they're born again. Mm. But 
there's a high degree of what you would call evangelical nominalism. Mm. So you'd have everybody would say they're born again and use our sort of language, Bible-believing Christian type language, but their life is exactly the same. But doesn't that make it more difficult to to communicate the gospel for people to respond to the yes, gospel. Yes, it can be. Yeah, yes, it can be, because most people think they are. Mm. Um, but if you are communicating you know, the importance of change your hearts and lives as repentance, mm -hmm. while well, even the ones who say they are, you know, uh, will be challenged by that. And you can be very direct out there. Like, well, I remember, because of my emphasis on like, repentance, uh, putting faith in Jesus, being baptized in water, being baptized in the Holy Spirit as being the proper Christian foundations, we'd, we'd form cues. Those who want to repent and believe over here, line up, right? Yeah. Those who want to get baptized, line up here. Those who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, line up here. And those who want to have some demons cast out, line up here. And it's as natural as breathing. Mm. It's really, it's, it's really you, good. You, you, yeah. You'd never get that here. No, because you, you, if you're talking you demons, you have to yes. go through hours of chatting yeah. and yes. whatever. Yeah. I mean, does the church face different problems and, and yeah. as a result of this? I mean, um, what, what are some of the issues that the church really are facing out there? When I've asked, when I've asked my Zambian friends, and I have a lot of Zambian friends, and I count them as true friends, you know, this isn't like, you know, the, the big white man Buana coming in. I am a friend of theirs and I help resource them. When I've asked them what the problems are, they've told me consistently there are three major problems. Uh, drunkenness, witchcraft and immorality. Yeah. And those are the things that they face. Within the church? Or, or, or? Within, mm, well, in terms of people coming into the church. Within, yeah. the, within the church specifically, the... There is a problem of resources. Yeah. A huge problem. Yeah. Um, but so we go, come out to us. Okay. So, so, yeah, I was, I was wondering whether oh, you were sorry. saying this was the problem that, with people in the church. Or the, but these are the people that they're seeking to reach out to that are coming yeah. in. Yeah. That those are the three main areas. That's right. But in terms of, of problems within the church, um, th there is a massive problem of resource. And, like, there are no awful let me be really blunt about this right but there are massive needs in africa there are massive needs in zambia hiv is, is epic huge problem people die all the time there's generations have disappeared you, you could look for where's the 30 year olds where's the 40 year olds you know where are the 50 year olds they're gone they're all dead um, why, have, why, why in each of the houses, if, if it wasn't for the Zambian family, African family, where you look after relatives, um, the whole of society would have collapsed. Mm. Because the household I was in recently, there were assorted young people uh, who have no parents. Because their parents have died. Mm. Um, but anyway, the... The, and, and people will give, people will give money, you know, for orphanages, which are desperately needed out there. And you look at the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't build schools, they don't build orphanages, they don't build mission stations, they don't build medical facilities, but the churches do. Mm -hmm. And it is needed, and it's fantastic. But if, if you were to ask, what is the need of the church specifically? And the church needs resourcing, it needs study Bibles, it needs good materials to work with it needs that they can't afford to buy the stuff that we take for granted mm. they need lots of you a book to mm. be blunt mm -hmm. um, and my yeah, focus we're trying to do more. yeah okay. my focus is to support the churches mm. and particularly the 80 odd churches that mm. in the fire baptized network um, you know when I say study Bibles you think well what, is that going to change the world oh yes it is you know if you if you train equip uh, a church leader and his wife you'll have um, people who will be able to you know refute error and all that sort of stuff also they will then train the congregation um, uh, in, in biblical ways of living because that's that's what's going to save Zambia mm -hmm. if, if people did what the Bible said age wouldn't have gone anywhere so I mean it sounds as if people are getting saved and from, from, yes. from that aspect. Yes. Um, and I, I presume some of them are getting saved from, 
you've mentioned Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. or other background mm. where there would be teaching that we would not accept as being biblical mm. and therefore people have to be <laughs> delivered from that. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't mean in the demo yeah. demonic yeah. way, but in, in that. And it, it, it is this teaching. And so what you're getting is, is, is people that need to be taught, need to be fed, mm. need to grow into maturity yes, yes, so that yes, they yes. can then bring others along. Yeah. That, that is, as you see it, the biggest need mm. out there. Uh, you know, the, this time, you know, the uh, number of people gave me money to go across. I obviously took my own money and I took a lot of material with me. Uh, thankfully, you can get stuff out there now. Different missionary groups will do it. So I spent thousands and thousands of pounds on study Bibles, books, and other things, uh, and I could spend so much more. Mm. But it makes a massive difference. It makes a huge difference. You should have seen the, the way the the leaders were, and they weren't they weren't just jumping around because oh I've got a little present. They knew that this was going to really really help them in teaching their flock. Uh, in getting to understand the Bible better. I, I went out there and I, look, I don't do the tourist thing. Mm. Uh, I just, I'm there, you know, a few sessions in the morning, an hour each, a few sessions in the afternoon, an hour each, talking to people a bit in the evening and lunch times uh, on really important biblical stuff. You know, we would, how we got the Bible, how do you know the right books are in the Bible? Because they face the same questions. Da Vinci Code's out there as well, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. you know, how can we understand God and the Trinity? What about the Gospel, the importance of repentance, faith and baptism? Um, uh, there's, a, you know, they, there's a lot of influence for, on the health and wealth front. We, we were dealing with that, and that's not what God is into. This whole idea of, you know, trust Jesus and you'll be rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know that sort of thing. We talked about the importance of character above gift, and the, and how you can operate in the gifts of the spirit without being religious or freaky. Uh, it was really good, practical, biblical stuff, um, and they need. A lot of them were saying they were they were taking notes down like ten. You know, mm. a lot of them were saying this is so good we can teach our people, and I go out there to help and equip. And as you said, you you've been there for a number of years, and you go yeah. back. Are you seeing that growth? In other words, here you have and you spend this time and you really input to these pastors. Mm -hmm. The next time you go back, are you seeing that mm. that has achieved something, that they are putting that into operation? This time, more than any other time, I've seen a difference. Mm. Um, and I was, I'm not putting it all down to myself because I know that the, the other guys that are working out there, the Zambians themselves, I've, I've been, you know, doing stuff as well, but I noticed a huge difference this time, and there were some quality. You could see there were some real quality men and some superb women mm. who were educated, who were really grasping things, and uh, I was I was very impressed with them as a group of leaders. About seventy, seventy-five. Mm. Uh, yeah. And is. Is the church looking to reach out? I mean, you, you, again, we've talked about Jehovah's Witnesses. You've mm. talked about equipping them in that way. There are obviously other belief systems mm, out there. Mm. It, it, is the church, apart from getting built up and, and getting mm. God's people built up, is, is there a, an evangelistic spirit, for want of a better term, mm. a, a desire to reach out and communicate that with people? Raging. Mm. Raging evangelistic spirit. Um, the five baptized churches... and. In one sense, what they're doing causes a problem. You see, there are the cities, but over 50% of Zambia is rural. Yeah. Um, over 50% of Zambians are subsistence. You know, they just go out and get some food and whatever. Um, and if you've ever been there, you'll see the towns, but when you're driving up the main road, you see these little groups of huts and things, you know. Um, anyway, what, what the fire baptized churches do is that they reach out into the, into the bush. Okay, so they'll turn up and they'll preach the gospel, talk to people, pray with people. Big emphasis on praying, seeing the power of God at work. When you haven't got any money and you haven't got access to medical supplies, it really is only one thing you can do is trust God and pray. Mm -hmm. You know, They go out into the bush, see people saved, form churches. They've grown. When I first went out there, there were 16. There's 80 now. Um, and the, the, uh, of course, there's no money. So you get, you get 100 people saved, become Christians, but they don't do anything. So in the offering, you might have a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> or a few cobs of corn. <laughs> um, 
So that creates a problem. So you've got these people who are really going out there, uh, getting the gospel out, but they are stretched. So they, they take a car, car breaks down, who's going who's gonna to fix it? Mm. Where's the money going to come from? It's very hard, mm. very hard. And, and, and so these leaders that you are teaching, do you, they're obviously not full-time leaders. I mean, they have their own jobs, do mm. they, as well. as well? Is that an, an issue? Yeah, it, yeah it, it, things are changing. and. One of the things I, I said when I was out there this time was that, look, the, the, the model they've been working on is the typical, you build a church, people tithe, you get paid, and so, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that doesn't work. You know, when, you, when you've got 100 people in your congregation, only four wage earners mm. who earn a quarter, or, you know, it's just not going to happen, is it? So um, I was teaching about Paul in Ephesus, where... He, he didn't claim any money or take any money from the congregation. He did work. He mm. made tents, so he supported himself. So this, the model is changing now, and a few people in the centre are supported, some of them from the UK, but some very generous people. Anybody want to support a pastor? See, give me a call. Um, or buy some books, please, give me a call. <laughs> um, but th the model is changing, and we were talking about them getting jobs mm. to support themselves to be able, and they were shocked when I said that uh, I have never been full time, mm. which I've never been. Mm. You know, I people, most people know I'm uh, in my other life. I'm a, uh, I provide independent financial advice, yeah. um, but that's my other life, mm. uh, and but that supports what I do mm. uh, for God and whatever. Um, so that the the model is changing now. Out there. Yeah. I mean, we're, uh, we're always thinking that, you know, we, we can take, we can go with the missionaries to them. Uh, I mean, I know that is changing in a while, but mm. looking at the church in Zambia, I mean, are, are there lessons that we can learn or, or are there things that, 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 that we should avoid? I mean, when you go there, mm. do, do you come back with a sensing, hey, we could really learn from that here? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I say to them, right, I arrive, other people go out there, we bring things, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they're very thankful. But I say to them, look, please, don't you ever run away with the idea that we do all the giving and you do all the receiving. You know, the sense of faith, uh, of worship, uh, the simple idea of one of the things they say is, um, uh, they, they might start a meeting and say, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good, right? And some of these people live in abject poverty. Mm. And it is, it is a marvel of the modern age that some Zambians, they, how they do it, I don't know. They come from very, very poor circumstances. And it's in the culture they turn up smart for church. Okay, there's me, I turn up my jeans and t-shirt, right? But they, they, they you know, really handsome looking young fellas, beautiful girls, um, older ladies, beautifully dressed. They're just, you know. But the key lessons to learn from me, from them, and I counsel people when we go out there, don't go and think that you can teach them. You can't teach them to evangelize. Mm. The only advantage you've got is you are white. And you're white and people come and listen to you. Don't dream you're better than this lot. They know what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know. We're a novelty. So I know a friend of mine who goes out there and he goes out with the Zambians. He's the Mazungu. People in the bush come to see the Mazungu. They hear the gospel and get saved. So, um, but we, we, can, we, we should learn from their faith. We're so tied up with our stuff, our, our materialistic W way that we live and we're obsessed with buying the next bit of kit and whatever, whatever, whatever. These people have next to nothing and they praise God like there's no tomorrow. Mm. I said, I said to, to Greg, my friend, we were going to a place called Kasompe and if Johnny Malongo ever hears this, Johnny, well, that was a great meeting, I loved it. But um, I said, w we're late. We're late, Greg. Oh, they, they started ages ago. They'd be worshipping for ages. I said, but, but it's getting on. <laughs> I said, look, they'd all be, let them all worship. They'll be worshipping for a long time. We walked in. You'd swear it had just started. It was pumping, you know. We need to learn some of that. Mm. Not in a superficial sense, but these people were praising God. Um, 
and I've been in conferences sometimes, six o'clock in the morning, they're banging the flipping drums, but you can't moan because it's sort of a spirit of uh, joy and desire mm. to serve God. Um, the, the simple, natural, real, ordinary use of the gifts of the Spirit, and particularly stepping out in praying for healing and deliverance. Do, we do need to think, learn that. Do you think we become professional? Yeah. You know, in, 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 oh, in, yeah. In, the, in the way that we do it, rather than just believing God. And, and go, do, 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 do you feel it's sort of, I suppose, I would call it almost down back to the grassroots? Is, is, yeah. is that what's yeah. going on? Uh, yeah, it is. And there are things they can learn from us. You know, uh, they, they've inherited a particular style of doing things which hasn't been helpful. But when it comes to, you know, I, I was... I was hearing some fantastic stories. There was one. I was driving along with the guy in the car, telling me about a particular couple, and I won't identify yeah. them just in case. Yeah. Um, and they said, "Oh, well, you know, um, what's her name? We, uh, the, we we first met her, and me and my mate, we had to pray for her because she had some really serious demons." And for them to say that, this would it have been bad. really bad, really bad. And this woman is now one of the leaders of the church. Uh, and it was just the most natural, ordinary thing. Another guy said to me, we went to see someone else. They're not a Christian yet, but we prayed for a daughter. Her daughter uh, was made well. She's seen the power of God. She just gets saved in the next few weeks. You know, it just, it just happens. Yeah. We can learn that. We can re really need to learn that. Yeah. And... Do you, do you feel there are certain things you have to deal with with them of what they should avoid out there? Yes, I, I, I think um, uh, I, I think f they've inherited an old style Pentecostal way of doing things. I'm not having to go with Pentecostal because no, no. I'm charismatic Pentecostal myself. So I, th I, I try and teach them to get out of that. Um, which, but they've learned that from us. It's a bad habit they've picked mm. up off us, you know. But there we are. So there much to learn. So much to Thank you so much. I, I've been fascinated by it. I trust you have as well. Pray for Zambia. Pray for JT. May God continue to do that work there in a great way. Thank you so much for being with us. See you again next week. Bye for now.